Today we're running YOLO on the latest NVIDIA Jetson developer kits. YOLO, short for you only look once, is a deep learning model that can spot, classify, and segment objects in images or video, and even track human poses. It's fast, lightweight, and easy to fine tune, which is why it's so popular. All the Jetsons do well with YOLO, but one of them might surprise you. All of the Jetsons are set for maximum speed. We are using a Logitech C920 webcam running MPEG at 30 frames per second. Let's look at object detection. Let's configure our model. We're going to use YOLO 11S. CPU. So baseline, what does this do? Star detection. Let's see, it sees a person and a chair, and it takes a little bit of time here. It looks to be in the range of 1100 milliseconds, somewhere in there. And we can see what happens here on the CPU. It's basically pegged. You can see it's not a memory issue. We have a bunch of free space still. Let's stop detection. Okay, let's switch over to the GPU. We're using floating point 16. Start detection. System throttled. I don't like that. Okay, go away. <laughs> so it's coming down here. Let's see what it settles down to. We went from 30 frames per second to 18. It looks to be right at the 24, 25 millisecond per inference mark. Let's see what else it understands. Mm, cell phone, pretty good. Well, it thinks my watch is a clock. It's not wrong. What else? Here's a keyboard. I like this keyboard. It's a fun one. It's a Logitech. Let's do a little bit of work here. It's putting up the video. It's doing the detection. But it's not really being that stressed. Stop detection. Let's use the Tensor cores. Tensor RT. OK. Start detection. OK, we're down into the eight, seven or eight millisecond range. So you can see that's quite a bit of difference. We start out at 1100-ish, just using the CPU. And when we start using the tensor cores, we get into the eight millisecond range. Eight milliseconds is less than 1100. Stick around, you'll learn stuff. <laughs> Let's see if it recognizes a book. You have to hold it just right for it to recognize it, I guess. Interesting. You can see that the GPU is being a little more stressed. As we brought our inference time down to eight milliseconds. Gives us a feel for how much of the system is being used. Okay. Let's take a look at another task type. Stop detection. Let's look at segmentation. GPU sounds good. Start segmentation. So it looks like that gets down into the 27, 28 milliseconds per inference. It's not really sure on the chair, it looks like. Crank that up a little bit. Notice that the inference is longer, so we lose some of our frame rate. Let's try it on the tensor cores. And that's a difference again.
Let's try posing. I'm a poser, so I should be pretty good at this. Let's turn this off. Poser. Try GPU first. Okay. Start my pose. There we go. This will do a full body pose. Right in the ear hole. <laughs> so that's kind of fun. So we're getting 28 ish on that. Let's switch over to Tensor RT. Here we go. So it's right at eight milliseconds. You can certainly work with that. It knocks your frame rate down to 17 and a half, 18, somewhere in there. Okay, we're over here on the AGX Orin. We're using twice the cores and twice the power. Let's see how we do. Start detecting, boy. Give it a moment to settle here. Let's see how it's doing on the CPUs. So they're pretty much cranked. They all appear to be in the 90s. Not a whole lot of GPU usage going on. Looks like the inference is about 845 milliseconds, 850, somewhere in there. One frame per second. Let's try it with the GPU. Start detecting. Let's see, does it recognize things? Sees the cell phone. Recognizes the keyboard. Inference time around 20 milliseconds or so. Interesting. Let's try the Tensor RT. So we're right at 4.33 milliseconds, it feels like. Take a look and see what the GPU has to say. It's right around 30 to 40, somewhere in there. 4.3 milliseconds, that's pretty good. Let's take a look at this. Keyboard, yes it is. Take a look at our book. It's pretty good with the book. So our frame rate is also pretty good. It's in the 30 frames per second area. Let's take a look at segmentation. Phone. The clock. It's settling down to around 22 and a half, somewhere in the low 22s for the inference time. Let's use the tensor cores. So it looks like we're right in the four 75, 460, somewhere in that range. Let's try posing. So it seems to be right at the 22.6 milliseconds. 22 and a half ish, maybe 23. Let's try the Tensor RT. Looks like it's at the 4.2 milliseconds. That seems pretty reasonable. GPU doesn't seem particularly concerned about it. Let's move on up to the big boy. Okay, let's take a look at Thor. Straight from the CPU, start detection. So we can see that it takes couple hundred milliseconds to begin with. Let it warm up a little bit. 
It looks like it's stuck there. Let's go to a different model. Start detection. And it looks like it's about seven milliseconds. There's a slight difference between the two. Cell phone. Let's see if it recognizes the keyboard. That one's pretty good with the keyboard. So we're right down about 1.8, 1.75 milliseconds, somewhere in there. That's even faster. We're learning a lot. Let's try this with TensorRT large model. Okay. Start detection. So it's a little bit slower. Not too bad. You can set the confidence. That can be pretty useful. Let's see if it recognizes a cup. Oh, it does. Hooray. Let's select a different task. We'll go segmentation. That's always fun. So it does that relatively well. Looks like it takes around 7.1 milliseconds, 2 milliseconds. You can see the, <laughs> thinks my watch is a clock. Let's see if we use TensorRT what it does. So we're back again into the two millisecond range. That's quite a bit of difference. See how we are with the cup. Pretty good. Cell phone. Pretty good. Start posing. Oh, wait a minute. Now pose. I'm not very good at this. It's around seven milliseconds. Let's go with Tensor RT. Speed that engine up. That warm up, and we're right in the 1.8 milliseconds. Again. So that's pretty good. Let's sum it up. When we look at the numbers on a graph, it's pretty much what we expect. If we are just using the CPU, inferencing takes a long time. We know that, that's why we have GPUs. Once we get on the GPU, the speed up is quite dramatic. On the Orin Nano Super, we go from 1100 milliseconds to just under 25. That's a 44 times speed up. One thing to notice is the difference between the Orin Nano and AGX Orin. I would expect a larger advantage for the AGX, but there are other factors at play. Also, even in this early stage of development, we can see the raw speed of the Thor in play. When we start using the tensor cores, things line up much closer to what we expect. The tools here aren't precise enough to measure times when they start getting to the under two millisecond mark. All said, the Orin Nano Super puts on a good showing. It's pretty clear that the GPUs are not being fully utilized. It takes some scaffolding and work to fill the pipelines. Here's another way to look at the same data, theoretical frame rates. You can see that we're just scratching the surface on Thor. The big challenge is filling the camera vision pipeline efficiently. Also, Tensor RT provides quite the speed up, but takes preparation beforehand. The YOLO model must be converted to a dot engine format. This can take several minutes, depending on the model size. Fortunately, groups like Ultralytics provide command line tools to help with the conversion. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. Hmm. A remote shark. You gotta like that.